Uh, number 10, Jay Towles says, Hey, Pastor Mike, in 1 Corinthians 2 8, is Paul referring to earthly rulers or spiritual rulers as he does in Ephesians 6 12? 1 Corinthians 2 8. The Ephesians passage, he talks about, um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual, uh, what's the term? Realms of, well, let's look at it real quick. Um, since I'm not going to quote it perfectly, right? Ephesians 6, 12, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Um, he seems to be here talking about all kinds of spiritual things that they're dealing with. Uh, and rulers here, I don't think he's talking about human ones exactly. I think he's talking about the world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Okay, so I agree with you there. I, I agree with your, your question here, um, Jay Towles, that Ephesians 6 is talking about spiritual things there. And 1 Corinthians 2, verse 8, None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. What is this talking about? Let's back up a little bit and we'll see what it is they didn't understand. Um, I'm going to back up even a little bit more. They all start in chapter two, verse one. And, oh, sorry, there you go. Uh, and when I came to you, brothers, and I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. This is not a boast, guys. This is, Paul was struggling. He was going through all kinds of stuff. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. Okay, that's the first moment where we get the wisdom of this age. The rulers of this age, could these be spiritual beings? Could these be human beings? Well, that could be either or. Um, he could describe the Satan's forces as those who were doomed to pass away and who are the rulers of this age. He could also describe um, the rulers of this age being those who are in high places in either religion or politics. He could describe it that way as well. It would work either way. Uh, but we impart a secret hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this. They didn't understand the gospel. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now, this is where I, I lean towards thinking um, human rulers may be more in view, but it seems like this could apply across the board. Like if, maybe Paul meant both. Maybe he meant both human and spiritual. Because would Satan have actually sought to crucify Jesus if he understood what harm he was going to bring upon his own kingdom. Uh, no, I doubt it. I doubt he would have if he had really understood the plan of God. I don't know if you guys realize this, but yes, yes, Jesus is prophesied. Yes, Jesus is thoroughly throughout the Old Testament. There's all these pictures and typologies, but it's there in a way that makes the most sense in hindsight. When you see what God does, you go, that's what it was all along. And it's like, it makes total sense and it connects in a million ways, but it wasn't intended to be fully understood, certainly by Satan, um, because why would why would he um, crucify Jesus in that regard? And this is something that had to happen for the salvation of mankind. So, yeah, I see it could apply to both. Um, the ones who actually did the crucifying, he says they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Usually when you, when you talk about they, the ones who actually did the crucifying, I don't think here Paul tends to be talking, it seems like he's talking about demonic forces, even though there was demons behind it, but, but rather when you see the preaching in the book of Acts, right? The ones who were said to have done it in the gospels, the ones who are said to have done it more frequently and more directly are the Jewish leadership and the Roman leadership. So Jews and Romans, both of them, the leaders in particular. So you have like the chief priest, you have, you have him in, you know, striking and then requesting and the, you have the Pharisees requesting for Pontius Pilate to crucify Jesus. You have Pontius Pilate agreeing. He sends him over to Herod. Herod in a similar way, uh, effectively condemns him, doesn't release him, doesn't help him. And so you have all these sort of Jewish rulers and Roman rulers going against Jesus. So I, I would tend to think verse eight could go both ways, but it's probably more about the human ones because of the frequency in which the act of crucifying Jesus is seen to be um, done by human rulers. 
more as an emphasis than spiritual powers.